It's the NFL on EA Sports, where the division rivals will clash in the AFC East. It's the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins, next on Madden NFL 24. The summer humidity has given way to an absolutely gorgeous fall afternoon here at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Today, a fun matchup in the AFC East, as it will be the New England Patriots taking on the Miami Dolphins. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, the Dolphins, they've got some high hopes for 2023. They feel like they've got the pieces to make a run. They need a little bit of health, but they think they can be right there in the AFC East. And they'll want every game to be a track meet because speed is their calling card. If they're able to sprint out there ahead of people and make them chase, they'll be tough to reel in. Meanwhile, for the Patriots, they come in off an 8-9 record a year ago, a second losing season in the last three. It had to happen sometime. But you say don't pour water on these pads just yet. <laughs> no, not at all. No one should ever do that. Remember, they're always going to be tough for you to crack defensively. Offensively is where they have to make a jump. They've got to start scaring people with some big play weapons on the perimeter. Jason Sanders now to get this one started and we are underway from Miami from a couple yards deep he'll bring it out of the end zone and no alley to be found the coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18 for the Patriots offense set to go to work with Matt Jones at quarterback in his third season now out of Alabama it was a much rockier season for Jones in his second year and even had to survive a brief challenge to his starting job this is a big campaign for the former Rookie of the Year runner-up. He wants to get back to Pro Bowl form in this one. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. A thousand yard rusher a year ago. Here's Ramondre Stevenson. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Now Jones. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? No. No, not at all. Work now for Jones and the Patriots here after the sack. It's third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that'll be complete to Stevenson. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. And that's one of those calls where you play it safe, but you're hoping that maybe something might spring for you because instead of forcing the ball downfield on third and long, maybe you can hit them with something underneath, break a tackle or two, pick up a block, and see what happens. Not here, though. Good job reading the screen, and it sets up fourth down. And here comes Berrios. A 39-yard punt, a return of five, and it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins set to go on offense for the first time behind their 25-year-old quarterback, now in his fourth NFL season, Tua Tungavailoa. Injuries overshadowed a great season from Tua last season. He led a Miami passing game that was one of the best in the league, and even more importantly, took them to the postseason for the first time in six years. That jump they were looking for from him, it absolutely occurred. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. Looking to pass, Tua. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. Lawrence Guy. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. 
And so much for that great field position to start the game. Now they're way behind the sticks. Can't wait to see what their second down call is going to look like now. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Now Tua on the bootleg here. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage. But it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force. And they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Tua now on first down. And he'll get this into the hands of Braxton Berrios. It'll be a gain of five, and that's going to bring up second down. So the completion there, but Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allowed a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him, because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Two are going to throw. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up fourth. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. Tua on fourth down. Oh, this is intercepted, intended for Hill. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Patriot defense has a touchdown. Well, that's what you get, apparently, when you try to take on a Pro Bowl cornerback. I and mean, what a play there to make the interception and also bring it back for six. And he is so good that we've seen teams absolutely stay away from throwing the ball at him. Here, he's just reading the quarterback's eyes the entire way, makes a great play on the football, and turns it into six. Chad Ryland now to add the PAT. And he gets it to make it 7 nothing Patriots. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Braxton Berrios now from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go-around. And sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better 
that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. And the ball on the 30, here's second and four. Once again, it's Mostert. And he's dropped just before the line to game. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Third and one, and Tua wants to throw it. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, they've moved the ball okay here in these first two drives, but this one's going to get them out to nothing. They've got to start dialing up some plays that allow them to finish drives with points. So on fourth down, here's Jake Bailey to punt for the Dolphins. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return, and the Patriots take over. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Throwing Jones. He'll get this to his tight end, Gasicki. And down right around the 32 yard line, four yards on the pickup. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second down and six now. Up the middle, here's Stevenson. And he'll push forward for a couple to the 34. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Jones. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Not much happening offensively here early on. That's two drives and zero first down. This defense, they've come to play, and they're the better of the two units here so far. Here's Bryce Behringer on now to punt. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. the ground it's Mostert to start the drive and this will leave him a yard short nice pickup of nine yards on first down well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now second and short what do you think early shot here I like where you're going obviously we've been together for a while because you know me I want to take that shot early and loosen things up ball on the 27 here's second and a yard they'll stay on the ground with Mostert and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. On first and 10, it's Mostert. 
They juked him. And he'll have the Dolphins first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Here's Tongue of Iloa on first and ten. Got a man, it's Barrios complete. And now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. From the 43, here's second down at seven. Throwing now is Tug of Iloa. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And Waddle gonna have a Dolphins first down as he's across midfield to the 48. It's a gain of eight, and it'll wind up moving the chains. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Back to the running game with Moster. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. 50 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. So from the 26-yard line, here's second down and three. They'll run right side with Mostert. And he is going to lose yardage here. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here. Third and five. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. I had a man over but he missed him and it's incomplete well the other day they told us well, we've got third and five or less we have to be able to convert and I guess every team would say that Charles but an opportunity missed there what they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point and they liked some matchups that they had thought they could exploit them unable to do so on that play Sanders kick is good and they are on the board but still trailing it's seven to three so that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD, and it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. Here comes Montgomery now to return it. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. New England trying to get a place on offense. It's been an awfully slow start for them. This is their third possession. They don't have a first down yet. So that means they have to change up what they're doing. And for some teams, it's a change in tempo, usually moving it to more up-tempo type of an offense just to try and change their fortunes right now. What they've been doing so far isn't working. Maybe they'll do that. Jones and the Pats now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. It's Stevenson with a run to begin the drive. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. And credit the tackle to Brandon Jones. 
all runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. Here's second and ten. Looking to throw. Jones. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Back to throw. Jones. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. Even keeping the back in for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. Here's Bryce Barringer now. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Here's Barrios. A nice return there of 11 to help mitigate a good punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Dolphins about set to go to work on offense. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets them up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Two yards to go, second down. Play action, now it's Tua. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill, complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami, it's the Dolphins with the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. And they'll come up second and seven. Now Tua. And he's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have him, you use him. Because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that drive, four plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And a 
and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. New England's offense set to go. The results for them so far not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? And the drive starts with a carry by Stevenson. Up to the 20. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. Stevenson gets it again on second down. There's the stiff arm. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. Stevenson now on first and 10. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback. They also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And this complete to a man they went against in practice for years, Devontae Parker. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 44-yard line. Straight ahead at Stevenson. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage. Left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Here's Jones to throw on second down. Short pass caught by Henry. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that will bring up third and one. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. And we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations, and we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. Jones on first down. His throw incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. Second and 10. Operating from the gun, Jones. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Brandon Jones picking it off. Point. 
It's good to make it 17-7. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Here comes Montgomery now to return it. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And you wonder, I mean, is it even possible, especially for the quarterback, to mentally reset after that quick of a turnaround? But we're certainly going to find out, aren't we? Because that play will stay in your mind, but somehow you have to compartmentalize, put it aside, pick yourself up, and get moving in the right direction. Jones and the Pats now with a first and 10 at their own 18. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster, and he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Here now, second and four. Out of the gun, they give it to Stevenson. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The offense on third down, they've only converted once in four tries. This time it's third and three. Open man right side of Smith-Schuster complete. And he will have a Patriots first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Now a second and ten. To throw again, Jones. Throwing the out route and complete. That's Stevenson. Two yards the loss and now third and 12. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. The sidelines there so you can only go so far outside. And they're able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they use your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline, you know something? He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. down here and that's all folks good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation the Patriots send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away that's taken on the 25 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And here comes Raheem Mostert in the Miami offense. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys <laughs> have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. They'll start on the ground with Moster. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 79 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner. 
than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Off of play action, tongue of Iloa. That swung out to Moster. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch. Oh, this is intercepted, intended for Hill. Picked off by J.C. Jackson, and the Patriots will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. And that's now the second time he's picked off a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively, and you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. And now out come the Patriots. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Throwing to start the drive, Jones. And his throw is incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. On the handoff, Stevenson. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Now Jones throwing on first down. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. Calling a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. A six yard pickup brings up second and four at the 40 yard line. Now Jones. Now a short one to Gesicki. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the field. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. These sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. From the gun, it's Stevenson. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. 
Throw out wide is incomplete. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. On now the rookie fourth-round pick, Chad Ryland, for the Patriot field goal. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And they're back within a touchdown at 17 to 10. Well, still some climbing left to do to get back to even, but forcing a turnover and getting the field goal there, that's a small step toward erasing the early deficit. Absolutely. That interception field goal, that's the beginning of what they hope will be several steps towards erasing that deficit and building a lead of their own by the time this game is over. So after the field goal, Ryland back out as he'll send this one away. Taking it at about the one. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And two interceptions already here in this first half. Well, that's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones, they find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. They find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Now, can he put it aside? Let's find out. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Tua sets up to pass it. He'll swing this out to Mostert. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. What do they have for this? Third and 11. On the handoff, this is Moster. And a good tackle there right around the 30. Stops him short of the first down. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now the Patriots' offense, they work their way back out onto the field. The last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them, but I'm quite sure he would be content to just take extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again, second and 10 from the 25. Jones throw complete there to Smith-Schuster. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 18 big yards on that one and a New England first down. And now at this point in the first half, you've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. Jones now on first and 10. He'll find Smith-Schuster again. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. A big completion there against double coverage. And Charles, 
One of those guys had a pick on him earlier. Yeah, so he didn't allow that to deter him at all, did he? In fact, it probably was a challenge. Okay, you got a pick before? <laughs> it's my turn now to make the big play, and that's exactly what he did. Jones, and his throw is going to be incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He finds Douglas complete. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? I like any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have a first down and also well into field goal range all the way down to the 15 here. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks who tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punt, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So the two teams will head to the locker rooms here in Miami with the Dolphins on top. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. The Dolphins got some strong play out of their quarterback number one, Tua tunga -Vailoa. He had a touchdown pass in that first half helping his guys to a halftime advantage. Okay, coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. Barrios now from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. I would imagine the overall halftime tone was a positive one, but what do you think the talking points were in the locker room? Well, if there were three talking points at the half, partner, all of them were about turnovers because they were pretty loose with the ball. Otherwise, this lead could be even bigger. Now, I don't think that they overly harped on it, but I think they told them, guys, if you want to keep calling those plays that are exciting, you've got to take care of the ball. Otherwise, we may have to dial things back a little bit.
second down and three. Two are going to throw. Tyreek Hill's got another one. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Two and a Tyreek for the Miami first. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And he's across the 40 for the extra yards to the 43. 94 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. They fake the handoff, now Tua. They're going deep for Hill. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. What has not been the best game for him, but he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete, but you're right. Hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Second down, here's Mostert again. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. That is caught. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 33. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Partner, that's excellent timing right there. Breaking off the route and being able to hit it right when he stops. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They hand it off to Mostert, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. You got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sends his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Here's Tug of Iloa to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Got a man. It's Waddle complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. 
throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Here's Mostert. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Now a third and six. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. Patriot D there, and it's fourth down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Sanders' kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get involved in the end zone. They'll run with Stevenson to begin the drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Snap will come from the 31 on second and seven. Again, it's Stevenson. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. That's caught by Parker. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and 10. Up the middle, here's Stevenson. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven. Throwing Jones. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Operating from the gun, Jones. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 32-yard line. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. And that's well executed there on third down, and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent gain. Meanwhile, Jones throw here taken in by Gesicki. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Now a handoff, Stevenson. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. That gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep, first and goal. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Now Elliott. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots are an extra point away from drawing level. And maybe that's the magic touch right there. They didn't use him at all in the first half, at least running the football. But here they entrust him with some work down in the red zone, and he responds. One carry, one touchdown. Extra point by Ryland, up and good. And that will tie things at 20 all. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Dolphins offense returning to the field. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. Now it's Tua. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. And that is not what you expect from a receiver of his caliber. Sometimes you get a little ahead of yourself. You don't look it in, and all of a sudden it's on the ground. A surprise to all. Throwing now is Tugabailoa. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. From the gun, it's Tua. He'll let this go deep for Waddle. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. I usually hesitate when I say a guy's got world-class speed, but this guy might. So let's fire the starter's pistol. Let's go. If you've got him, you've got to try and use him. A lot of anticipation with the ball in the air, but no, incomplete. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on here to punt it away. 
and take it right on the 30. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Jones and the Pats now with a first and 10 at the 40. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. No daylight for him to run through there, and he ran into the defensive tackle. And that guy blocks a whole lot of daylight as it is. He is truly a big man who just made a big play. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Operating from the gun, Jones. To the right side, he's got Parker. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And it brings up third and five now. Looking to throw, Jones. Patriots send out their punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. Taking it about the 16. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. The Dolphins ready to take over on offense. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches... Don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get them about five yards. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to have five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Motion man is Barrios. Second down, here's Mostert again. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. Now to him. Pass taken in by his big tight end, and he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time, they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. A run with Mostert up the middle. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. It's a good pickup on the ground of seven yards, and time has run out on this third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Second down, here's Mostert again. sensational afternoon continues. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, 
bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Two of his throws taken in by Waddle. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. The end result, 21 yards. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. Going to the air, tug of my low. Touchdown, Dolphins! Tua fighting his own Alabama teammate, Jalen Waddle. And the Dolphins have broken our tie and have taken a fourth quarter lead. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that went good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and they will take a seven-point lead. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And this taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So the Patriots coming out now. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. Stevenson gets it again on second down. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but now from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. And this offense on third down today, they've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third down and 12. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Jerome Baker able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And when you go five wide like they just did there, you can't really max protect, can you? No, you cannot. What you're hoping is that by going five wide, you're forcing the defense into coverage. And if you do that, you got a chance to find some people downfield. But if they audible themselves and go into a blitz, then it's got to happen right now. Or very lights quickly. out. <laughs> or exactly right. Turn them out. That play's over. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is set away. And here comes Berrios. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And the Dolphins will begin this drive in great field position, first and 10. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. And that one too wide and incomplete. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Mostert. 
And he takes this for about six down inside the 40. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the... Now the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up fourth. Uche was used sparingly, less than 40% of the Patriots' snaps. He has still authored a breakthrough season with 11 and a half sacks. I would best believe his usage is going to skyrocket this season. And yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. New England trying to get a place on offense. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Jones. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Back to throw. Jones. And this complete to Henry and Henry's going to pick up a Patriots first down as he'll get this up past the 40. It's a pickup of six. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. To the right side, this is Stevenson. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big game? Or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? From the 46, here's the second down and four. They run once more with Stevenson. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. No surprise to see Stevenson making that type of a play. People know him well. Unsurprised to see him over 1,000 yards this past season. He's a bruiser who was also fourth among backs with 69 catches. He can do it all in the New England offense. A give for Stevenson, running right. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. When trying to create space for your running back, the first thought is how physical is the offensive line. Sometimes it's just positioning. On that play, it didn't matter about positioning or being physical. The defensive front, they outleveraged them and won the battle. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Out route, and this is Henry with a catch. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Operating from the gun, Jones. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Take him down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. 
and we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Dolphins' drive will start deep in their own territory with a first and 10. Miami's offense set and ready to go. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs, clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Now a pass that's taken in by Hill. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. 23 yards, the final tally. I'll tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the gun, a run with Mostert. And he'll take it across the 50 and into New England territory. Nine yards is the pick up there. They'll have a second and one. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if you picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to be, second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. And he will get enough for a first down, and that will lead us to the two-minute warning. points of contact necessary at this stage as he'll run on first down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Mostert. And yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw is Tua. And he is going to have a Miami first down, and the Dolphins are going to win the football game. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big 
overtime situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. Down to an ego's Tua, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing little.